what is up? Jens here with Game Explicit, and welcome to part three of the Perfect Media Server. In part two, we saw how to install the operating system and how to prepare your hard drives. And so, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install SnapRate, how to prepare your shares, and how to install Plex Media Server. So, without further ado, let's jump right into the computer. All right, guys, we're here in the computer, and the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to install uh, Samba and we are going to prepare our shares so we can access our storage in the server through Windows So the first thing that we need to do is open up MOBA X term and We're gonna log in into us our server through SSH. So just Use the same username as password as always uh, All right, so we're in the server so to install Samba, what we're going to be doing is apt install Samba. Oh, of course we have to give ourselves root permissions first. So sudo dash i, put in your password. All right. Okay, so now we can do, okay, so apt install Samba, enter. Uh, just hit yes to continue. It's gonna download and install all the required uh, files that we need. We can check the status of the service by putting in service SMBD status. And you can see that we're running Samba. At this point, I would like to reboot the server. So just go reboot, all right, that's done. So hit R to restart your session. Log in with your user. Give ourselves root access again. Cool. All right. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to open the Samba configuration file and create a new share. We're gonna make a backup of the original Samba configuration file. So if anything goes wrong, we can just go back and restore the backup. To do that, we're gonna use the following command, which uh, copies the samba.conf file into samba oh, smb.backup. So we do that. And now if we actually browse to that directory, we can see that we have the backup here and the original here. All right, so now we're gonna go into the Samba configuration file and configure the share. To do that, we're gonna use an utility called nano. So it's nano and then we go to the path of the configuration file which is slash etc slash samba slash s m sorry s m b dot conf all right so here we see a lot of of default configurations in here, we don't need, really need to change anything. We just need to scroll all the way down. Just go all the way down. We can leave everything in defaults. And here we're gonna add our share. So this is the configuration. I'm gonna leave it in the comments so you have access to it. So you can act, so you can copy paste it too. And here in the comment, it's basically the name of the share. The path is the mount point that we did in our in the previous video for our pooled uh, hard drives. Browsable means that you can browse the contents. Read only means that well we want to write also to the shares, so we put no. Guest OK will enable Windows users to to access the share without needing credentials. And the next configuration here is just to make sure that all the files that are gonna be stored in the Linux uh, server are going to be under the root user and the root group, and they're gonna have the read and write and execute 
um, permissions by default. Once this is done, the only thing that we need to do is hit Control O to write the files and then enter to write the changes and then Control X to exit. All right, so now that the, the share is there, we're going to reboot the server and try to access it through Windows. Hit R to restart the SSH session. Log in again. Give ourselves root access again. All right, so now in theory, we, we should have the share available to our Windows computer. So we go to the file explorer and we're gonna input the name of uh, the IP address of our server. So that's 10. And as you can see, we have the share right here. We can go and browse it. This lost and found folder is just a Linux file system folder and whenever your hard drives have any errors the logs are going to be saved in this folder we can hide the folder so you don't see it here and uh, i'm going to put the commands in the description also so you can uh, hide this folder um, so now we can actually i'm just going to delete this is the old one the old network drive and the easiest way to access it is just to map the network drive. And to do that, I just go again into the share. We go storage. And then I copy paste the path. I go back to my computer. I hit the map a new network drive and we get this. And I just paste the path. You click finish and it's going to open up. And as you can see, it also gives you how the, the size of the, of the share. In this case, it's 2.68 terabytes. And that's because we have four one terabyte hard drives. One is all only for parity, so you don't see it here. And then you have three one terabyte hard drives. So for a total of 2.68 terabytes, almost three terabytes. All right. So with that done, the next step is to install SnapRaid, which is our parity software and our back, like parity slash backup software. SnapRaid doesn't come in a way that it's easy to install. So we have two options. One, we can build the software from source, from source code, or we can just install it with the pre-built one that I already prepared. So for this video, I'm going to leave a download link in the description so you can download the so you can download the pre-built one and if you guys want me to show you how to build the the software from source just leave a comment and i'll show you it's it's really simple but to make this easier for you and to install it quickly we're just going to use the one that is already pre-built all right so once you go and download the file you're going to have a file that is similar to this one a .deb file so now we need to transfer this file into the server. So we're going to use our previously created network drive and we're just going to copy and paste it in, in there so we can access it in our Ubuntu server. All right. So back into the server, if we go into the mount point and we list the items, we go mount storage you can see that the file is there so now the only thing that we need to do is execute it and install it and to do that we're going to use the following commands so it's d p k g slash i space we're going into the mount point so mnt slash storage and then we go snapread.deb. We hit enter. All right, so that's 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 it. Pretty simple, huh? All right, so now that snapread is installed, 
we have to go and create the configuration file. To do that, we're going to use the following command. So that's nano slash etc slash snapray.conf. This is going to create a new configuration file in the folder etc. Um, as always, all the, all the commands are going to be in the description for you so you can copy and paste them. After that, we just hit enter. All right, so this is an empty file. I'm going to copy the configuration that I already pre-configured for this. And you can also use the same one and just change, change it for your hard drives. And I'm going to show you how. So you copy paste the configuration. All right, so I'm going to explain exactly what we're doing here. Uh, we actually don't need this part. All right, so it's pretty self-explanatory, but the, here it is. In in here, we're going to tell Snapbrite which hard drives are our our parity hard drives. So we type parity, and then we tell the configuration file where this hard drive is mounted. So our parity hard drive is mounted into. If we go back in dev. Uh, sorry, no, if we go back in MNT, we can see that we have parity one here. So that's why this is the path slash MNT slash parity one and then slash snap rate dot parity. This is the name of the file for the backup or the parity uh, content. If you have multiple parity hard drives, you the only thing that you would need to do is put another another line put parity, put the path for the second parity and just do exactly the same. Now, here we're going to define where the snaprate.content file are gonna be stored. Usually I like to store them in the server and I like to have a couple of copies in the actual uh, hard drives. So if anything happens to the server, I can restore it, like take out the the hard drives from that server, rebuild the whole server, put the hard, the new hard drives there, and, and then just rebuild the parity. So you just have to type content. I, I put this one, it's on the actual server, and this ones are on the actual hard drive. So in this one and this two, we're gonna have a copy of this. After this is done, we're gonna go into our data disks. So basically here is where you're going to be adding the data. Uh, you're going to tell uh, Snaprate which ones are your data disks. In this case, we only have three disks, so we don't need disk four here. So the only thing that we need to do is erase this. And that's it. If you, uh, Of course, if you have more disks, more than three, and you have like five or, or ten or whatever, you just have to add more. S tell Snaprate that this is a disk. Put the name, so uh, the label. So this is just a label. So data one, data two, data three, and tell them where they're mounted. All right. So here we can exclude. The third part is to exclude any folders from being um, backed up into the parity. And basically, the only one that I have right now it's the lost and found because I don't want to be law. Uh, I don't want to be back back upping all the logs that might be created in the future so i just exclude that folder and it's going to exclude it from all the drives from all the hard drives specifically all right so once that's done the only thing we need to do is hit ctrl o to write the configuration and then ctrl x to exit um once that's done we're going to reboot the server all right so we're going to hit r to restart the session log in again give ourselves root access. All right, to test that snap rate is working, uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go into the share and we're gonna copy any files that you have. All 
All right. So we have content there now. And so whenever you want to back up your hard drives, the command is snap raid sync. So what this command does is that it it backups the current state of your hard drives. If you added new movies and you haven't done uh, a sync, then those new movies are not going to be uh, protected with the parity. And I'm going to show you how to automate this with a very uh, simple script in, in a future video. So basically just go snap rate sync hit enter and I misspelled it snap raid sync you're gonna get those warnings and that's basically because this all the snap rate content files were not found but this sync is going to recreate those files in, in that location. So if we do a sync again, it's going to read from the disks and you can see that everything is uh, synced and everything is uh, good to go. All right, so the commands that you might be using with snap rate is snap rate sync, as we saw. We also have snap rate check, snap rate check. And basically, this is going to do a paranoid check in the array to see that everything is there and nothing is missing or any of the files are corrupt. So when do when you do snap rate check, it's going to check the whole array. Just be careful because this command, if you have a lot of data, this command takes forever. It takes like at least five to six hours to complete. Um, you also have a snap rate fix. And this is basically used when you want to replace a hard drive or a dead hard drive. The only thing that you do is you reconfigure that hard drive so that the server recognizes it. It mounts it automatically into the FS tab. And then you add that hard drive into the snap rate configuration file. And after that, you do snap rate fix and it's going to recre recreate that uh, dead hard drive. I'm going in, in a future video, I'm going to show exactly how to do this. So stay tuned for that. All right, so once we're done with snap rate, what we are going to do is we're going to install Plex Media Server. So we're going to go to the official Plex Media website. So we're gonna go, sorry for that. We're gonna go Plex on Google Media Server. All right, guys, so we're here in the Plex Media Server uh, website. And so we're going to go into apps. We're going to choose servers. And then Plex Media Server. We're going to go into supported devices, latest new, that's fine. So we're going to hit download and then here we're going to choose our platform, which in this case is Linux. So we hit Linux and there we go. Choose your distribution. We're using Ubuntu server. So we're going to go Ubuntu 64 bit, hit download. And that's going to start the download of the installation files. All right. So this is the installation file. And what we're going to do is the same thing with snap rate. We're going to go into our share here. And we're going to copy paste it there. All right. So once it's there, the command is the same as snap rate. So that's dpkg. dpkg slash i. And then we're going to look for the installation file so that's mnt slash storage and then it should be plex media server we do all that we hit enter and it's going to unpack and install plex media server all right so once that's installed i suggest we reboot the server at this point 
All right, so we hit R to restart our session. Log in again. Give ourselves root access. All right, so at this point, we can actually just go into our web browser. And you need to type the IP address of your server, which is 192.168.0.10, and then put the following after that. So semicolon port 32400 slash web slash index.html. You hit enter and it's going to ask you to log in with your account. So you have to create an account in the Plex uh, website. And once you have that, you go sign in. Well, you put your username and password and then you go to sign in. Uh, we get the welcome screen. Uh, it's asking us if we want the uh, Plex Premium or the Plex Plus. In this case, we don't. All right, so it says, great, we found the server, which is our the, our previously named server, Nobunaga. Uh, if you want to access your server outside your home, you, you select this one. I'll just leave it like that for now. Hit next. All right, so in this part is where we're going to be adding our media, uh, where our media is. So we go add library, and then we're going to select, let's say this is going to be our movies uh, uh, library. So in the share that we previously created here, I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to name it movies. And this, in this folder is where we're going to be um, putting all our movies. So we go movies, uh, films, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay, films, next. And now we're gonna browse for the folder. So we go into the root and then we go mount storage movies. You hit add, add library. All right, we have that, hit next. Server set up, that's okay, done. All right, so Plex Media Server is up and running. All right, so now what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna copy a movie into the movie libraries. So copy movie. It's gonna take a couple of seconds and um, All right, so once that's done, I suggest you guys to put the, the name of the movie and the year. That way Plex is going to recognize it more easily. So now we go into the Plex and then we go into our film library. We hit this uh, three dot menu and then we go scan for library files. This, was, this is going to scan this folder to see if there's any movies in it. And so it's now downloading all the the metadata that that needs. So like the pictures and like all the all the cool stuff that Plex provides. All right. So as you can see, the movie is there. And if we go play, you can just uh, hit from the beginning. And the movie is playing perfectly. All right. So that's it. Um, everything is set up. Your share is done. The Plex Media Server is installed and up and running, and you have SnapRate to uh, create the backups of your data. So stay tuned for other videos because I'm going to show you how to automate the SnapRate so that every day at the same time is going to create a backup file no matter what. And also I'm going to make a video on how to, cre to create the SnapRate from source how to build the, the software from source in another video. All right, guys, that concludes our three-part series on the Perfect Media Server. I hope you guys enjoy it and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell to get notified first and stay tuned for more explicit content. In part two, we saw... <laughs> really? <laughs> stay... Está bien? Lo que tenía que decir, güey. Ah, <laughs>